Hello guys, my name is Dio Costa and for today's lesson we're going to be looking at subroutines, procedures and functions. In Python you can create something called a subroutine and this is just, instead of writing your whole program as one big giant block of code, you can separate it into something called a subroutine. The advantages for this one that makes the program easy to read, it makes it easy to test. So when you test the subroutine, you, you, you can easily find where the issue is and you don't have to be testing the other subroutines. The subroutines just separate your code to nice little functions, um, which which the biggest one, shall I say, is you don't have to rewrite any code, since you can just say, oh, run this function. I'll give you an example for the uh, on the PDF, it shows an example, and we'll go through this example. We will start a function uh, with a function that prints out this my subroutine three times. Notice how subroutines come before the main program. Yes, subroutines must be defined before the main program is run. <clears throat> like shows here, subroutine over here, and then here's the main program. So let's copy what they have over here. So use the the word def to define a new function. Let's just call this my subroutine. Anything now below this colon, so anything inside this, is now what will be run if you call the subroutine. For i in range 1, 3, or you can just say 3, no need for the 1. Print, this is a subroutine. So let's put this. Uh, that's, that's that's exactly right. Uh, let's exactly do the comments as the PDF shows. It's a good convention to actually comment your code. Start of main program. Okay, so uh, let's go through this code. So the first thing we do over here is we define a new subroutine. We've called it my first subroutine. And all it just does, it prints out this sentence three times. And then it goes on to the main program. So this won't load, this won't, nothing will be shown. When you run this code, none of this, this, like this print function will not appear. You'll not see this print. That only happens once you've called the function. So um, if you wish a function to run, you must call it. What this means is you just write the function in and open and close brackets anywhere anywhere below the subroutine because you must you must first define it before you can call it. Um calling is just you know it's just the name of saying oh run this run this subroutine. It's just the name that program is given you when you wish the subroutine to run you call you say you say it's called you wish to call the subroutine. And then we just print end of program. So let's run this. So here, start of main program, this is a subroutine, this is a subroutine, this is a subroutine, end of program. So that was easy. Right? So the next one uh, which appears here is we can use pr uh, parameters to make subroutines even more useful. The parameters of the subroutine below are text and times. So again, another one of these key terms that programmers use is called parameters. And these are just word these are just the words or the variables um, which are inside these brackets over here. So let's let's do this. So let's we can actually just copy all this. Okay. Let's just indent this. Can, you can either use tab to indent, or you can just go backspace and click on enter. Okay. So, let's go through this code. So, define my first subroutine. Yes, we're defining my first subroutine. Text and times, we're getting two variables called text and times. For i in range of zero and times, print text. So, what, what is this exactly saying? So, over here we just define it, but over here, to get these values of text and times, 
a it gets these values on this line over here my first subroutine is this line where it gets that information when you call it and you assign data to over here it will place that data inside these uh, variables over here so sample text will go on to text that value sample text will be transferred or assigned to text and then the number five will be assigned to times so if i was to add another variable like a and i was to add like another number over here seven that seven will go to a and then it's saying for i in range of zero to times i.e from zero to five right over here print text so it's going to print sample text guess what five times so over here as you can see start main program one two three four five end of program it print out five times because we've specified over here get that get get sample text put that as the text uh, variable and put five as the times variable that, very simple let's go to the next example that the that OCR has given us the subroutines we have looked at so far are procedures yes these are called procedures uh, procedures uh, proceed procedures and functions are a bit different but you can use the words really interchangeably um because they're very similar um the other type of subroutine we use is a function other a function is a, is a subroutine that returns a value yeah, that's the main difference a a procedure does not return the value it does not use the word uh does not use the keyword return while a function does um and we'll go through what what that exactly means as soon as we can use it within another statement, we can use the return keyword to send a value back to the main program. So let's just copy over this piece of code over here. Just control C. Copy. Just put that as as well as these are just examples. Example. examples of procedures and this will now be an example of a function Functions. so let's see how we've done this I like my spacing okay so function to double number double number again it Again, it's it's um, mean there's this number value. Twice num equals two times number. Return twice num. A equals six. Print print double a is double. And bracket close bracket six. So let's run this and let's see, let's see what exactly happens. So it gets uh, the number twelve. So let's go and try and explain this code. Um, so first we define double number, twice number equals two multiply number, return twice number. So let's look at the main program, This because this is where we get the value of number. A equals six, print double A is, now this is where we get the actual value of number. Double is the name of a subroutine, and yes, you can use the print function when you're, you can use a print function when you are looking, um, when you are using functions, so you can print the subroutine uh, value. Yeah, this prints up the subroutine value, so we get the double. Then we send the number six as num. We send the number six onto the variable number, so it becomes double six. Twice number equals two times the number which we know as six. Then the return twice number. And but what you notice happening, what you notice happening, is you go here. Double A is twelve. Simple as. Um, but what is this return function really doing? Well, like it says over here, we use the return keyword to send the value back to the main program. That's what we do. In that that is what the return function does. If we were to get rid of this return function, let's see what will happen. It will print none. 
cause it will like cause it won't know. Just won't know. You just use this return function. Um, just to just to state it, please allow the stumble. Send this value back to the main program so we can then use it. You know, so that it knows yeah when it's double, when it's saying double six, it knows you know we want we want to basically print out the twice number. Yeah, that's that's what basically this does. Return to the main program and with print function, print out that number, please. So let's go on to the task actually because we've not actually done task yet. This is task ten a. And let's see what it's telling us to do. Write a function called circle area that takes in a float to represent the radius and returns the area of a circle. Area of a circle is pi r squared, where r is the radius. Now, first thing I'm going to do is because we're doing pi, I'm going to use is import math. So I'm going to, at the top of my program, I'm going to write import math. So that's the first thing I want to do. I want to import math. So I can use the function pi, so I don't have to type in 3.14, blah, blah, blah. Um, so calculate your function from calculate your function from this main program. So it's telling us they want a function. That means that they're going to want us to create is a subroutine like this one. So let's just copy this subroutine and paste it there. Let's just change it around a bit. We're going to call this circle area, as, as they have called over here. Write a function called circle area. And that takes the float representing the radius and returns the error. So we want is a radius. So let's just call this radius. And we'll just call this now is area. Area is equal to pi. So math.pi multiplied. So pi r squared, yeah. So multiplied by the radius squared, where we need two asterisks um, to get the power of out of two and then we say call a function on this main program by doing this so now how are we going to call it first, oh yeah first of all we've got to return it but this is how they want us to return it this is how they want us to print out they want us to say print yeah let's just actually just copy all these so they want to use um so what they're using they call it circle i call it something else i call it circle area so while there, so what this is doing right over here is again it's calling the function. Or I, I wish to I wish to display the function or import some data. I want number one to be part of radius, then run this code please. Then I want two to be the radius, and I want three to be the radius. Let's run this, let's see what happens. Here we go. We've got 3.14, 12, 28. So those are the so that that's it right now. No, that's those are the errors of that circle. Again, we could probably run this if we wish to, but the task doesn't tell us to do that, so we don't need to do that. Easy peasy, right? Not that difficult. Let's go to task B. Task 10B. Right function called uh, de uh, des2bin that takes an integer and converts it into an 8 bit binary number represented as a string. So, again, we want to probably use something similar to here because they're calling a function you have to create a function so this is deck to bin that is an integer and convert it to an 8-bit binary so it wants to take an integer so let's just type in integer now some of you are probably wondering oh how am i going to do this now um looking online i can find over here that um python has actually got its own so, so Python has its own function called uh, bin, and that converts an integer number to a binary string. So let's try that one. Let's try that. And let's see how it works. So let's write binary equals bin. Let's go on to integer, and let's then return binary. I want us to run this. So let's just copy all this. And since this is a function, we must tell it to print over here because we want a value to be returned, or to be displayed. So we must use the print function. So it seems to appear 0b11, 0b100, 0b101, 0b101. So that kind of has worked, and kind of not. It has not appeared an 8 binary string, but it has appeared as the necessary 
uh, that news it has stated over here. So in binary, one one would be three, but it will be six zeros, then one uh, one that will be then three. But it kind of works. So yeah, we're gonna leave it as that. Yeah, it does show us the value. Well, these are the necessary values to create these numbers. So I think, I think that works. Let, let's actually try a bigger number. Let's try in 75 and let's see what happens. Yeah, see, it increases it. Yeah, that's fine. Just telling us, I guess, the zeros until this. So it's all zeros, then 1, 1. I think that's what it's trying to tell us. It's, it's fine. We'll leave as that. Um, right procedure. So this is now a procedure. Uh, called triangle that takes in a number then prints out a triangle of that height so triangle 4 call the function from the, this main program so showing us over here an example of a triangle over here so let's uh, do this then so let's copy out a procedure that we've done we've done. here's a procedure let's do one of these this is task 10c so here is a, let's just uncomment that, we don't need that, we don't need this. Okay, let's, so, do they give us a name? Oh yeah, triangle, that takes in the number, it's out there. Okay, so triangle takes in a number, that prints out that height. So let's just write number here. And let's also change this over here, so let's call this triangle. Let's change this. So guys, this task is actually quite harder than it first looks. The main reason why is that the OCR you to do is an equilateral triangle, which is more difficult than just doing, for example, an isosceles triangle. So in this video, I'll be doing an isosceles triangle as it's much simpler and take less uh, less time. And plus, the things with the equilateral, I think um, some people won't be able to really understand as you're using multiple loops and such. So Let's do is a isosceles triangle, which is much simpler to do. So first, let's actually let's actually do what over here tells us to do and tells us to sum the number four there. So let's do that as our first thing. Second, okay, so we need to do is a while loop. Let's do a while loop. So while number is greater than zero, print. Of course, we need to check to make sure the number is greater than zero. Got a greater base. Asterisk times the number. Then we're going to do number equals number take value one. Now, what we are going to do is we're going to do is like a upside down uh, isosceles triangle. Then work piece over here. The most number of asterisks will be at the top, and it will, it will, it will decrease. So that's what we're doing over here. So we again, so that's like four, we get four asterisks, then three, then two, then one. But there's actually a short way then then write number equals number minus one. You can write number minus equals one. What this does, it takes away one from the number and then assigns that value onto number like we've just done over here. It's just a shorter way of writing it. Um, so let's run this uh, now, and as you can see, we do get an isosceles triangle, an upside down so isosceles triangle over here. So four, three, two, one. And so now let's actually do also these ones. Let's also do these ones, and let's actually let's do this one. So it'll be like this. You can see it here. So just two, then one, then three, then four, yeah, then three, two, one, then four, then three, then two, then one. These do look better, but they're much longer to be able to do. Okay, that's it for today's lesson. Tomorrow's lesson we're going to be looking is at lists and how they work in Python. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed, and I hope to see you guys very soon. Goodbye.